As I say, from my perspective, I'm okay. Yeah, cheers, Reese. Cheers, Reese. Cheers, Jay Robinson. Thanks, mate. Scott Thompson, hope you're well. So we're just waiting for Jack. Um, hopefully, he'll be online. And by the way, this guy's got a, a story to tell. Absolutely great for a, for a young lad. Mup, I'll be back on this week, mate. I've got two books to finish. Just finished the, the draft of Every Boy's Dream, which was sent to us by Jamie Boyle, which is which I'm really pleased with now. Cheers, guys. Um, and the other book I'm doing is obviously about the Sears, Operation Sears, which I'm busy doing at the minute. Thanks, Disciplined Hooligan. Thanks for everybody. The support's great, honestly. Thanks, thanks so much. Can we all just get along? Savannah... If that was, I just wish things were as easy as that. But unfortunately, there's too many people who've got. Uh, but don't worry, I'm a strong person, and I'm not letting it get to us. Piney, uh, the end of July for the hard copy. Jack, how are you? Son? Hello, man. Good. How are you? Yeah, good to see you. Good to hear. Now, I, the key thing for me was how your Geordie accent was. Still there. Still, still there. Still there. Good stuff, mate. Good still, stuff. There's a few words that sometimes I hear a few words in that. Uh... <laughs> been here six years now but so i get battered from my mates back home but yeah you know, most stuff. of it's still there good stuff well look you know honestly mate, um i don't think i've had a more prepared guest a lot of the guys who i've had on I, i've known everything about them obviously with yourself your name right. came up in conversation with glassy when we had him on last week and you know I've never known somebody as be as prepared, and, and what you sent this is is a is probably going to be a cracking book, you know. As your career pro progresses, you've obviously yeah. your head screwed on. But listen, for everyone who doesn't know who you are, um, Jack Gert, you're an Antlander at the minute across uh, across the pond. Um, let's talk a little bit about you know how you got there. First of all, when, when did you when did you first you know realise you know the football was what you wanted to do? Well, the football since I was since I was little. Uh, my dad and my uncle took us to the Wars End Boys Club and uh, it started there just started playing all the way up until I was 14 um, and then I went to Gateshead um, went to Gateshead College under Paul Bryson um, and then I got to a stage where it was kind of like they were trying to offer you something but it was like it wasn't really securing my future you know what I mean so um, I decided to start looking into the chance to come to America through Andrew Muxworthy at Scholarship Connect um, and he told us like some of the some of the lads that have previously done this as well. So I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to consider it. You know what I mean? Um, and before I was going to come over, I went down to Nottingham Forest for for a while. Um, got offered a six month contract there, but again, it was the same situation. Obviously, a higher profile club, but they already had a, a fullback who was on a long term deal, and I basically had six months to over, overtake him. Um, so I decided to to go to America and Atlanta to get like a plan B, you know, to study uh, business economics. So I just thought, you know, if the football doesn't work out, then I've got something to fall back on. Um, so one of my mates, uh, Lewis Sharp, who I played with at Gates, said he played it at the school in Atlanta. And he said, look, the, you know, the life, the opportunity and everything's over here. So I followed him over, played. Um, and then I finished, me, finished college. And there's not, really, there's not really a league between like the USL, MLS and like, it's just the summer leagues, really. Um, so when I finished college, I got the chance to go to Atlanta on trial and then that was everything I'd wanted, you know what I mean? So I've lived here for six years now and it was just a chance that I had to be fully prepared for. Amazing story, to be honest. Um, you know, and, and you seem to have your head on your shoulders for a young lad. I mean, to, to leave your family at the age of 18, I think it was, is yeah. a hell of a jump and it's a hell of a decision. To go to somewhere like Notch Forest would have been a hell of a decision. But to, to jump on a plane and go, you know, across the world to America, is, it shows how brave you are. Before I forget, Paul Bryson was in touch with us today. Unfortunately, he doesn't have um, Instagram. Right. He's, he's not great with technology, but he does yeah. have Facebook. <laughs> and what he said was, can you please pass on his very best wishes to you and congratulate you on everything that you're doing. He, he really got it that he couldn't see the interview, but he speaks so highly of you and he passes on his best to you, mate. No, he's, uh, he's been brilliant for us, Bryson, especially when I was at Gateshead. He you know, he was always trying to push us into the first team um, and he just demanded so, like, high standards, you know what I mean? And every opportunity that that, that I, you know, presented to us, he, he was always there for us. So, I think for a coach, he's been, like, the best coach that I've played under. Um, and, yeah, he catches us on Facebook a couple of times, but I'm going to try and record it and send it to him and see if he can, see if he can, uh, see if he can watch it. 
Yeah, good stuff. Well, as as I know, and and you know, most people will know, you're a Newcastle fan, and obviously we're all getting questions already about the Newcastle situation. Um, I, I've got to warn you, man. Your dad did tell us that you've got you're very strongly opinionated, so you you're probably the same as me, to be honest. Um, which which isn't which isn't a bad thing. But we'll we'll go with the questions. We'll see where we're going. At. I've got a good understanding of your of, of your career anyway, and, and where it's going, and, and and where you've been. So if we do run out of questions from people, then we'll you know we'll revert back to that. But Mook Murphy says, "What do you think of the current Newcastle squad, Jack?" I think it just like from when I was watching like as a kid. Like I think we've had thirteen years of just doing enough. Do you know what I mean? Like some of the some of the players that we've brought in has been like panicky you know just to keep up um, and obviously that's from the ownership and the structure of the club as well I just think it's been ran all wrong um, but the players I mean they're working under Bruce and again I think we're just going to do enough to stay up and you know until we get took over like I say I don't get excited because how many times have we been in this situation do you know what I mean yeah so um, the squad I think we've got some good players but obviously if we want to you know hit like top eight and challenge for things then some of them are going to have to go, you know, some of the contracts that some of the players are on are probably not justified. Um, but again, he's probably just, Bruce is just doing the best with what he's got. And uh, I think if someone does come in like Pochettino or something like that, then then I'd see him at the end of the season. But if we want to go and, and challenge, I think we've got to change a lot of things at the club. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I don't think you get many people disagreeing with you. John Ball says, would you like a move back to England if the move and the deal was right and fit for you? I mean, right now, I just want to play, you know, just at, at Atlanta. You know what I mean? It's been a dream come true. I've lived here for six years. Um, I've been away from my family, you know. It's, it was really tough at the start. I was actually 17 when I came over. I, I came over to visit just by myself. Um, but I'm trying to set up something here where I think there is a good opportunity. Um, so for us to come back, would have to, everything would have to be right. But I'm, I'm happy at Atlanta and I'm happy playing here and, Obviously, I've got Glassy and another fellow Geordie that you might not know about, Tony Annan. He's the academy director. He's a Wall's End lad as well. Yeah. So, um, I'm very happy to Atlanta. And I, I love playing over here and I love the life over here, you know. Um, but, yeah, Newcastle. It's Newcastle came knocking. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I like it over here, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Borough Mag says, how does English football differ from American football? Uh, I think I, when I first came over, like the college level, it's there's a lot of athletes. Do you know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of like very quick and powerful people. Um, but technically, I don't think it's it it was at the same standard as you know as we have we've got in England. But the USL and the MLS level, it's very very close. Do you know what I mean? There's some really really good players over here, and especially the MLS is it's a really good level. Um. A lot of the players, you know, we've got a lot of South American players who are very technical, you know. In England, it's more like the English-British type. Um, but I would say it's similar, and I'd say they're probably getting closer to the English level each each year. Yeah. Dan Daver asked, is Joseph as good as he looks? We had Glassy on, obviously, the other night, and, um, you know, you, you've got to be careful what you say when you're in his position, but as as a player to player, is, is he as good as yeah. everyone yeah, he's quality. He is. I, I've been fortunate enough to train with the first team a few times as well, um, especially through pre-season and train a few times with Joseph. And he's just like, you just like. I think I remember once going up for a, a header with him, and I just bounced off him three or four yards. And you just think like he's just he's he's built and he, he's got that mentality where he'll do anything to win. You know what I mean? He's a clinical finisher as well. Um, but yeah, he's he's one of the the best players in MLS by by a while. Yeah, yeah, a lot of interest uh, around him as well, you know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens um, during during the transfer window. JP Wilco says, "What's your thoughts on the facilities at Atlanta, and should we look to make the same kind of facilities at Newcastle?" Obviously, there's been a lot of talk. Not sure whether you've been reading the Chronicle over the last few uh, nights, but obviously stuff coming out from the buyer side about you know the, the long term plan and you know that they're going to invest money in the facilities, etc. So you know is that is that something you think should be done and, and what Atlanta's facilities like? Yeah, and I was going to mention that actually it was I was I think I was watching Lee because I, I know Jackie's son Lee Clark. Yeah, I saw him when he was saying he's a bit like embarrassed when he goes to the Newcastle setup, you know. And uh, I don't think it's changed since I was playing against him, like academy games. No. Um, but honestly, with Atlanta, it's like 
I'd say it's probably the best facility in the world. Like you go in there and you just looked after brilliantly all the staff and like the facilities, the, the, you know, the pitches, it just doesn't even compare. And you think like Newcastle Premier League club, they should be, you know, they should be on par at least. Um, but it's, honestly, it's like black and white. It's just totally different. Um, and that gives you the, another thing was, was I think they've got the setup right at Atlanta as well because, you know, the academy, the USL, the MLS, they're all trained at the same place. So they're always able to, you know, push you up or, or you know, you're always in the view of the coaches. Um, and that's where I think we've got it wrong at Newcastle as well. Where, But again, that's not having the, the training ground facility standard to, to where it should be. And I think that's why a lot of the Atlanta players are coming through the USL and getting pushes to the first team. And, and we've only really seen the long staffs in the last couple of years come up for Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. It's disappointing because it's been a, a hotbed of soccer for many, many years and then suddenly, you know, it stopped. And, and that really does come with the last 13 years under Mike Ashley's ownership. So yeah. hopefully, you know, with new owners coming in, it will it will change the face of Newcastle United forever. And, um, you know, not just because there's a, a lot of money coming in from the people who are buying it, but as you say, because investment in academy and, 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 and spending time nurturing talent at places like Walls End Boys Club, where you came from, and Red Youth Boys, and, you know, you, you know wherever, wherever, you know, all of these boys clubs, working with boys clubs can only help produce the best talent in the area. So hopefully that's what the, uh, you know, the new owners do. Yeah, I agree with that. I think a big one as well is, uh, we, like, over here, say it's called Club Soccer, where they've got, like, you know, like, Walls End Boys Club, and they're all very connected to Atlanta as well. And uh, yeah. and even at the the younger the younger level, they play against Atlanta like in the same league as well. So yeah. they can, you know, they're always in the window. And I just don't think that back home yeah. we've got that. You know, the Newcastle Academy they're not strongly with like all the boys clubs. So they're looking at everyone you know in the community. I think yeah. that's something we can massively improve on. But again, that's the structure of the club. And again, I think if someone comes in, then someone needs to know what they're doing with proven like experience to yeah. to push it forward. Great question here from uh, Ellis Crawford, which you can see on the screen. I'm at Gator College now and I'm looking to go to America next year. Is there anything I need to know before going over? So he's asking for advice from you, really. I I think, like I say, if you're in a similar you know, position to me, was it is, if you don't get that big deal at that club where you know, it can secure your, your future long term, I think it's the best second option. Like I say, you, 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 know, you move to America and... Um, Whoever you're going with, just make sure that you, you know everything that's involved. You know where you're going, who's going to be there. If there's other fellow like English players there, that helped me a lot. Um, and it is going to be not just playing football. It's a, you, you know you, they call them a student athlete over here. You're going to do fifty fifty. It's going to be hard work as well. You know with the degree and the education. Um, but know that the opportunities will be here. That when you come over, there'll be doors that open for you. Whether that's from your education or from the football. Um, and I think it's just better than like a lot of my friends back home now, probably good enough to play a professional at some capacity, you know, could have came over here and and maybe got a plan B and, and just back working in a factory or, or doing something that they don't enjoy. And I just think that if you don't come out and try, then it's an opportunity wasted. Yeah, 100%. Lee Southern asks, are Newcastle United popular in America? Yeah, definitely. So I think we've got a... Uh, in Atlanta, anyways, there's a, there's a bar for those. It's like an Irish bar, and there's like they, they show the Newcastle game, they show every game really. But there's a there's a lot of like Geordies that go down there. Um, so I think especially with Almiron as well, like everyone who watched Atlanta with Almiron going to Newcastle, you've got a lot of Atlanta fans now who are watching watching Newcastle. Um, but you'd be you'd be surprised. There's more than you think. Do you know what I mean? Who've came over here and done some kind of opportunity in some capacity, and and now living over here. So I think obviously it's not as strong as at home, but there's a fair few. Right? You're going to have to get these shout outs out of the way because you've got some of your mates on Pabsy, Matthew Fisher, Chaloner. Nah, Paul... Just don't worry. Nah, don't worry about that. <laughs> In fact, um, I think Matty Fisher's trying to make it all about him. He says, don't forget about um, setting him up in the final. Aye, uh, yeah, a crack and play a fishy when we used to play at Gateshead. Uh, I think he's talking about Stoke. I think he's talking about Stoke. Uh, yeah. I set him up there in the final. He he put it away, and then we just went crazy after that. Was win the national cup. So, uh, yeah, he's a good lad, fishy. <laughs> Savannah Mag says, "How does the crowd in Atlanta compare to St James's Park?" Uh, 
I think it's I think it's close because Atlanta they they can get up to like eighty thousand in there. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's if they shut the dome, then it's kind of like a you know a condensed atmosphere. But the the fans are brilliant. The fans are great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say it's very similar to Newcastle. Like they just love their love their football, and uh, the support that you get. Like even at our games, we get a couple of thousand, couple of couple of thousand of the USL games. Um, but when you go watch the, the MLS team, it's it's brilliant. Like they just love the football, and uh, I think it's it's pretty close to Newcastle. Yeah, uh, Dell's a Jordy. He says, "Who would be the right manager for Newcastle once the takeover happens?" Obviously, we've we've discussed this with all the all the ex players over the last couple of weeks, and Steve Bruce is still in the job uh, at this moment in time. Um, yeah. you, would ex- you would expect the the new owners coming in to to replace him. Um, if they do replace him, you know we've seen the names bandied around. The two favourites seem to be Pochettino and Rafa Benitez. Who, who would you like to see, you know, take over if Bruce does leave? Um, I think I'd go with Pochettino. I think it's it's proven what he'd done at Southampton. He built them up, you know, and, and he'd done the same at Spurs and to a certain point where he probably didn't. He stopped getting the investment that he wanted. But you can see how you know how clever he is, and I think it's important that we start. We start playing attacking football again. No dis- disrespect to Rafa Benitez, but he's like a defensive player, ma- you know, a manager. Um, and I just think in Newcastle, like with the fans, we get. I think we deserve someone like Pochettino with like an attacking philosophy. You know, we can go at players and have exciting players and and get the buzz back round. Because a lot of my family over the last few years have cancelled their season tickets, and it's just been like the fact that they can't do it anymore. But I think if they bring in like a, a Pochettino and and he gets the money behind him, I think it could, you know, light a fire under the belly for everyone to get back, get back and support with like how we should be playing. Yeah. Ethan Joshua says, all right, Jack, I worked with your old man. So he's obviously worked with your dad at some point. Uh, John Ball says, media speculation circulated again today, linking the new owners wanting to bring Gareth Bale. Any mileage in this, do you reckon? Seems a bit of a step too far in advance for me. I mean, for me, you know, Gareth Bale's a big name. I think what they will probably do, the new owners, is, you know, they will certainly look at a marquee signing. And I think if, if I had to choose between Gareth Bale and maybe Coutinho, I, I think at this moment in time, I'd rather go for Coutinho. Um, but, you know, what do you think? Would you, would you like to see a would you like to see a, a big name signing just to make a statement? Or would you rather spend money on, you know, improving the squad on a, on a wider scale? Um. I think we can only do a couple at a time. Like I think there's a there's a right way of doing it. You know, to build them, we're not just going to go out and, and sign eleven players. Um, but I do think I do agree, thinking that we do need someone big to come in and be like, right, that's the project, and you know that'll probably draw other players to think, you know, I might fancy it as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I would, I think Bale, he would be brilliant. Obviously, you know, it's Gareth Bale, but I think um, he's due a move back. I don't think he, you know, he's not, he's not really liked at Real Madrid and it depends where he is in his career but someone that likes a Coutinho obviously he comes in he's exciting you know that could be the start of something big and we could build a team around him 100% I mean and we need you know we need somebody to score goals as well yeah. um, Matthew Fisher says Newcastle lost a great player in Leon Watson um, he's on it definitely in the wind up isn't he <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah he's winding up he is. Dan Davis says, "What do you make of the little snippet on NUFC.com today? Obviously, it just it, it, NUFC.com is a great website. I mean, Biffa, who runs it, obviously does a much better job, really, than the uh, the official club website. So a lot of people turn to that for information. And right. I don't know if you've seen, don't really have seen it today, but obviously, it's the first time they've really mentioned anything about the potential takeover, and they've the more or less said it'll be it'll be done this week, which is a brave thing for them to come out and say because obviously you know we know what the environment's like online. You know, you make a statement, you live or die by it, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's nice. It's, it is positive to see that, and and, and for me. I've been 100% confident about this takeover since day one. As soon as I saw Amanda's name linked to it coming back in, my mind hasn't changed. A lot of people asking again tonight, do, do I think it's going to happen? And, you know, is that why I've gone off Twitter? Because it's going tits up. Of course not. <laughs> the, reason I've come off, the, the reason I've come off Twitter is simple. I'm, I've got two books to write. Um, I've done. I've finished one and I'm busy finishing the other one this week. And I haven't got time to sit and answer 200 questions from English people and 300 questions from Saudi people. So it's it's as simple as that, really. The trolls haven't won, otherwise I wouldn't <laughs> be on here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm confident. Are you, you know, you've watched it from from across there. Are you confident the takeover is going to happen? And are you pleased with the people who are coming in? I think 
like I say, I don't want to get my hopes up. Like, you know, yeah. I think it's it's concrete. But I think if there's ever a time for it to go through, it's now. Um, yeah. Like, obviously, the shares that Mike Ashley had in Sports Direct are obviously lot, worth a lot less now. He's lost a lot of money. Um, mm. And publicly, he doesn't look too good at the minute as well. So I think, I think it may be the time where it could come together. And if there's ever a time, it's probably now. Because I just don't think... I just don't see him keeping a hold of it and, and putting up with it any longer when he's losing this much money. Do you know what I mean? I think if he can, if we can pay the right price, I think it, it might go through this time and hopefully it does and then that's when I'll be celebrating. But until then, I'll just keep keep calm. Yeah. Andrew Welton's asking what shampoo I use. I don't. I just use Dove soap on my body <laughs> and on my head. Not sure why you want to know that, but, um, you know, you've got to answer all these questions. Ethan Joshua says, Jack, do you know Daniel Smee from North Shields who's working in the USA? Do you know him? No, I don't think I do. I don't know if... Is he in Atlanta? I don't know if he's in Atlanta or not. I don't know. Let us know, Ishan, if uh, if, he, if he's Atlanta. Um, Athol Alex 25 says, what do you think of Almiron and how he settled into the Premiership? I think he's done well. I think he's took a lot of criticism, but when you think of it, really, the, the work he does for the team, you know, he gets up and down. And I think it's just going to take a little bit of time. Like I say, it's, he came from being like the star over here, you know, to being one of the best players in the MLS, to being you know, in the Premier League and it's a big jump and I think definitely as seasons go on he'll, he'll get better. Do you know what I mean? I think he's definitely got the talent. He's got, you know, amazing engine. He can get up and down for 90 minutes and he's definitely got the talent to improve as a team. It's just, can we build the players around him? You know, can we get a few more players like him around him so he can connect and combine? I think I think that's what Joe Linton, like I'm, one, I'm the first one to say Joe Linton's so frustrating but He's only getting one or two chances a game. Do you know what I mean? If he plays for a Spurs or a Chelsea, he might get six or seven a game and he's scoring goals and then no one's saying anything. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's because we're, we're used to uh, Rondon just taking one chance. Um, Joe Linton's been getting a lot of st- stick. But uh, for Almiron, I think, you know, if we can get a few more quality players around him, I think he'd be really good for his, his attitude and his dedication is just top notch. I agree with you. I think Almiron, and I've said I've said this a couple of times now. I think he went from being someone who was adapting to the Premier League, um, which is a hard thing to do, adapting to a new country, which is a hard thing to do. But he was playing with two experienced Premier League players in Rondon and Perez. And although he wasn't scoring goals, he was actually making the space and making the runs to free up space for them to score those goals that kept us up last season. Exactly. But what's happened this season is he's been thrust into the spotlight. He's still learning the game himself and he was he was basically the senior player but between him, St Maximum and Joe Linton. And there's nobody to score goals. And and Almiron was on you know, Almiron wasn't scoring, Maxim wasn't scoring, and neither was Joe Linton. And we had that crazy situation where when you know, did we get to Christmas without you know, just before Christmas, before any of them scored, it was, mm-hmm. it was ludicrous. And I like I've I've held my hands up. I've you know, I've criticized Joe Linton. You know, a lot of people think think it was unfair. I was just frustration as a fan because you know it wasn't his fault. The fee wasn't his fault. Getting the number nine shirt wasn't his fault. But you know, the one thing I would say about Joe Linton is, and the frustrating thing is, he he just doesn't put the effort in at times. You know, yeah. it's, prob- it's mm-hmm. probably one of them shirts which has never been washed all season. And I keep saying that because there's no excuse, Jack, as you know, and you you know this. You know, playing football yourself, there's no excuse for not putting any effort in. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's where he's got some of the stick where. You know, he's just kind of plodding on and, you know, he's got to be, even if we are struggling, do you know what I mean? You've got to put in 100% from the start to finish. You know, you can't come off. I bet he comes off a few times and he and he could have given a lot more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it, another thing on Almiron, I think, to be honest, I think he's better in the 10. Like, he's done a lot. He linked up with Joseph here very well, you know, yeah. in the 10 line. And I don't think we've played him there enough. But again, that's it, probably because of the lack of quality elsewhere. Um, yeah. We've been pl- playing him out wide where, I think he's better in the 10, picking the ball up in the pocket and driving the players. Um, so if we can get, you know, a couple of exciting... I think Maxim's he's made a, uh, a big impact just because of the sheer power, pace and power of him. He's direct. So I think if we can get someone on the other side, then we can push Almiron, Almiron in the 10, maybe behind the Harry Kane under the new owners. Hope so. <laughs> so. Tell him- Tell Ross says it's always nice for, for for somebody like yourself to get a comment like this. Tell Ross says listening to this young lad is refreshing. He's really level headed and great to hear his knowledge and focus on what he's doing. That's from Tell Ross. He's a big Newcastle fan. I appreciate it, mate. Yeah, it means a lot. It's uh, 
just trying to make like my family and that proud and just you know the decisions that I'm making coming over here I could have easily stayed back home and and played at Gateshead and you know obviously I would have been great playing for my hometown but it's just you just always you want a bit more you know a bit more opportunity and trying to secure you know a career for myself yeah uh, Gaz Anderson says which player has inspired you the most uh, to play football uh when I used to, when I used to go to the games with my dad and my uncle Terry, um, and I, when I used to watch Shira and like just banging goals in for fun, it was just like you know I've been growing up to you know it is Newcastle. It's just like that's the, that's your team, that's who you love. So I just everyone on that team was just like the Lauren Robert, Solano, like all that that Newcastle team, that special team. Um, I always just wanted to play like them. Do you know what I mean? Like I just wanted to play. Um, I'd say just. That team more than one player. Just going to them games, but just yeah. feeling the atmosphere and feeling how good it felt. You know, look, watching them score goals and and play well and and you know give a hundred percent. I've just tried to do that. You know, as best as I can in my own game and see and see where I can get to. The notes you sent us made us laugh at the start because the opening line in your notes is almost the opening line in my book, Every Boy's Dream. Um, about you know when I was born, always wanted to be a Newcastle fan, and it's it's you know it it, it it's true. You know you're all born a Newcastle fan, I'm sure. Tell Ross says, have you tapped Miggy for a shirt yet? I haven't, but uh, I was back home at Christmas, um, and I was on Time Off Beach, and he, and I didn't even realise he was there, and I walked straight past him, and I didn't. But obviously, I'd have to get me a uh, my wife to speak to him in Spanish because I don't think I'd be able to speak a lick of English to him, uh, but. Um, now maybe hopefully there's something that we can set up, uh, yeah. get me and him on and keep the connection going, you know what I mean? So I think it's important that we keep the connection between Newcastle and Atlanta. It's, you know, it's really not that different than people think. Um, and I think there's, diff you know, there's different things that can benefit from, from each other. 100%. Uh, Dan Deva asked his favourite question, and that is a dinner party. You can take three guests. Who would it be? It can be anybody. It can be play people you know. It, you know, I'm not taking anyone. Be, yeah. None of them. Lads it either. could be Matt. It could be Matty Fisher. I'm sure. He's Matty Fisher. He's not. He's on the door. Matty Fisher. He's on the door. He's <laughs> a, he's security. So, uh, so you can take any three. It can be legends. It can be um, anybody you want. I'm not going to go with players. I'm going to go with three people. The first one will be Adam Sandler. I just think he's brilliant and. Uh, Love watching these films, and uh, the second one will be Denzel Washington, another one who I just think's class, and then the third one's my favourite UFC fighter, Conor McGregor. Quality, great, right? yeah. decent lineup, mate. Decent, uh, decent lineup, line yeah. I think we'd be all right in a scrap as well. <laughs> so, Sly Cockrell says, "Did you ever get the train with Almiron?" I didn't know he moved. He moved on before, before I got there. Um, like I say, I, the academy director Tony Annan brought us in on the trial. I think it was only going to be a week and I ended up staying a month and then two months and then end up staying for three three months till the end of the season. Um, but no, I didn't, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't get the, didn't get a train with him, but all the lads at the, at the ground now speak highly of him and just say how, you know, how good he is. Dean Craig, I'm sure he's on another wind up. He says, get me a trail, Jack. I'm really good, honestly. Yeah, I live, <laughs> uh, he lives in the same street as me back home. Uh, <laughs> Twenty-five pounds less, and and if he sorted his eyes out, I think he'd be alright. Yeah, Pubsy saying he misses me on Twitter. I'm sure you do, mate. I'll be back later in the week. Don't worry about that. And I'm pretty sure by Thursday or Friday it should be cans. Um, John Ovi saying, will you be going on the cans when it goes through? Uh, it's another question we're getting asked on a regular basis. Are you going to have a can? And if you're going to have a can, what's it going to be? Uh, I won't be having a can, just because the we're we're in season now and. Uh, Hopefully it's coming back. Hopefully it's coming back around. We're starting to do individual training this week, so um, hopefully our season can get going again. So no no cans yet. I'll wait until we're in the Champions League first. Good stuff. Um, Beefy is on and says hi, Jack from Mam and Paul. Yeah, that's me, Mam and stepdad. Yeah. Watching and your back dad, home. Your dad's on as well. Your dad says hi. Um, uh, Arilicious says, what's your favourite memory from watching Newcastle United and what's your favourite memory at Atlanta so far? Two good questions. Uh, the Atlanta one's easy. It's it's my debut, you know, to have my sister, Kersha, uh, Liam, to come over from England and watch me debut was just brilliant because, I mean, that's, it's a moment I've 
dreaming about as a kid, you know what I mean? I didn't think it would be at Atlanta over in America, but um, that day was just brilliant, uh, playing the game and then, you know, going out with my family after and celebrating. It was just, that's definitely the best moment so far for Atlanta. For Newcastle, it would be, and Pabsy will like this one. I think I think I was, it was me and Pabsy were together. Um, for Newcastle, my, my favourite game was when we were 4-0 down to Arsenal. And uh, and we oh, came really? back and Teote, Teote hit that screamer and we hit 4-4. Just to hear the, the Arsenal fans just giving it all that for the first 45. A few of my mates left. Uh, we just said, oh, we're just going to stay because you could get a 10 at this point. And then when Teote put that in, I just think that was... That's the best game I've been to for Newcastle. Um, and obviously, I only catch I only catch a few games now a year when I'm back at Christmas. So, you know, I'll tr- try and enjoy them. Hopefully, we're, we're not fight, fight, fighting, fighting for relegation. You you must have been back for the Leicester game than we are this time round. Uh, I, I'm actually in a picture with Perez. He's celebrating and I'm, I'm on the front row shouting right. at him in, in, the, in the background. I, I can't <laughs> believe he'd done that. Uh, yeah, I uh, unfor- unfortunately is. Uh, yeah. I think it's more more towards the owner than anything else. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah. it's a crying shame because I know he wasn't everyone's favourite player, but the guy grafted and um, you know he did. His, he, he did. did. His... He gave a hundred percent. He scored goals as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. Were you at any pro clubs as a kid? Says L. Baines. Well, we touched on that earlier on, didn't we? Not Forest. You went down there and you had, a, you had a. Did you have a week down there or a month down there? Uh, it was closer to a month. Like like I say. Uh, me and my uncle Terry we travelled halfway around England I've been on trial at 14, 15 clubs and uh, went down to Blackburn at some point rather than like Newcastle or Sunderland it was just there was always just some reason why you know something wrong or just that and I think it was at Blackburn where when I really um, some bloke said you know we're, gonna, we're not going to take you this time but you're only one foot on call away you know from someone yeah. and I think that, that stuck with us really because I think even coming to America my first two years in college were a bit, you know, I was just, I was settling in. But my last two years, I really got that fire back to, to play, you know what I mean? And I just think that you've just got to be persevering, you know, you've just got to keep going for it. Because I think I've probably been rejected 14, 15 times yeah. by these by these clubs. Um, but if you work hard enough, you know, and you, you get good coaching and, and you keep going, because I know a lot of people who just got rejected a couple of times and then they just pack it in. Um, then I think I believe you can get somewhere. So I think when that's what it made it extra sweet when I came to Atlanta. You know, even at twenty four to 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 finally make it. I've still got you know a lot of years to play. Hundred percent. I mean, I've I tried to give that message to anybody who wants to take a back. Then you know, I, I I did that from the age of seven until I was eighteen, and then didn't go back into it. I was thirty, but it's you know going back into education, doing a degree, and then eventually graduating and becoming an actor at forty. Um, but the rejection is what is what pushes is. you. Up. You know, and, and those rejection letters or not getting the casting at a you know when you think you're, you're nailed on for it. You know, you, you learn from those, and it's exactly the same in any walk of life. You know, it the is. rejections make you stronger. It is I, and especially, like I said when I, when I was saying there was no, there's no real league between you know USL, MLS, and college really. So I played uh, a year out of college where I was just training by myself, you know, because yeah. I just believed that something like this would come about. You know, I believed that I was going to get an opportunity. Didn't know where, but obviously when I heard it was Atlanta, I never had more motivation, you know, and I, and I basically trained by myself, just out every night, you know, doing as much as I can because. When the chance comes round, you've got to be fully prepared. You know what I mean. A lot of people they just they sack it off for a bit, and then they get the chance, and they're not you know able to show their full full ability. But that's why I think it's important that you just keep going, and you're going to get a chance. You know, and it might not be the one that you want, or you know you may have to start a little bit lower, but you'll get a chance. Yeah, Liam Robinson says, "What's the MLS salaries like for players like Almiron?" Uh, I think it's different because there's, there's like salary caps and and different yeah. like designated players and um, but I think there is a lot of money in the league you know I'm sure he was getting paid very well um, but I just I don't think it's obviously on the scale of of the Premier League but it is I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be it's well paid and there's a lot of money in the league like I said these they're called like franchises um, where they've got a lot of big owners it's just the the rules that I think. You're only allowed three players over a certain amount of money, or or something like that. That's why I think a lot of the the designated players, what they call them, get looks, you know, to Europe and and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good, I. Yeah, good stuff. Borough Mag says, would Miggy and Coutinho work together? Do you think? 
I think so. Yeah, I think I think um, that's the kind of player who 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 we need to get around him because Miggy's so direct that um, I think he needs someone you know a be able, be able to play them quick one twos with and get in behind and and I think someone like that would really complement his game. You know whether one of them's out wide or one of them's in the ten or or whatever. I think just that you know that agility and the pace that they could combine. I think I would really be good. And I think someone like that is going to bring out the best in Biggie if we can get new owners and bring in some good players. Yeah. Kev Hender says, Hi, Jack. How far away are you from playing in the first team, do you think? Um, well, I, I, I'm training with the first team, you know, sometimes regular. Um, if they need you, then you go up. And I think that's that's great, Why you know, because we train just on the next pitch for them at the same time. Um but I've just got into the second team. You know, this is my first season, so I just want to do as well as I can with the second team and take any opportunity that comes my way. You know, I just want to work as hard as I can. Obviously, playing for Glassy, which is brilliant because, like I say, he's, he's a similar similar mentality to, to Bryce, and that's why I think we'll get on so well. Um, so just do my best for Glassy, and then if an opportunity comes up, then, it, you know, it's, not, it's, it's easy. You know, they can just push you up like a few of the lads this season already have been. But... Um, the opportunity's there, you've just got to perform, you know. If I can perform for the second team and, and do as best as I can, then, then hopefully I'll get an opportunity soon. Yeah. Savannah Mag says, are there any other players in Atlanta that could make the transition other than Martinez, perhaps? Yeah, there's definitely some... Yeah, there's a lot of very good players, obviously, like, apart from... Mart I don't really want to say, like, a lot of names because I, I still train with these boys, like, every day, you know, so I don't want to... I don't want to say who could go and who couldn't go, but there's a lot of the team that could make an impact in Europe, um, especially like in the Premier League, Newcastle maybe. Uh, I, I really think you know we're getting a lot of good players that are coming to Atlanta now to showcase, you know. Um, but I think overall, yeah, a lot of the team, a lot of the team could do a job for Newcastle. Yeah, hundred um, percent. With regards to the takeover. And this this is obviously a question from me. What do you think is more important, investing in the team, investing in the training facilities, or in, uh, investing in the ground? Um, I would say the team first, but it, it would be closely followed by the training ground. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, we, we've got to have a good... Uh, that's why, you know, going back to Atlanta, that's why I think that the base that they've got in Atlanta is so good that, you know, there's just opportunity there. Um, they've got everything that they need, and I just think that for us, for Newcastle to get on that same, you know, to produce players and and be able to, you know, make sure we're getting the best training, the best facilities. The facilities has got to be up there, but I think short term, the team, because I think you know we're still not guaranteed. You know, what I mean, we we don't want to be in the same situation again next year where we're, we're fighting for relegation again. So I think investment in the team has to come, but shortly followed by the training facility, because I mean. If they're coming in, they need to, you know, we need to have top quality facilities where we're able to, mm. you know, yeah. to push on. Hopefully, with a break that we've got, obviously with a pandemic, it's it's going to be a, a, something that they can address, you know, certainly, you know, pretty quickly. You'd like to think they'd be able to do that pretty quickly and come in and make changes. John yeah. Gore says, "What position do you play, Jack? And which current player would you say your game is similar to?" Uh, I play right back or right wing back. So currently, I play. We play with three at the back, so I'm playing on the right wing back. Um, I like to get forward a lot um, in the Premier League I like to watch um, Matt Doherty of Wolves I think he's a brilliant player he gets up and down and uh, Pereira as well the right back for Leicester he loves you know loads of energy gets up and down um, so they're the two that I watch like at the moment for the Premier League um, Trent as well obviously I like to get up and, and put some crosses in and it's great to watch him you know I try and learn try and work, learn from them kind of players Um Defensively, I like to watch one one Basaka for my night. I think defensively is brilliant. Um, so if I can try and pick up little things from from each of them, then you know I try and implement it in my own game. But obviously, playing wing back, I like to get up as much as I can. But obviously, defend first. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Which um, you know, which player do you, do you like at Newcastle and in, in the current setup? Is there is, have you got a particular favourite? Um, I think. A lot of praise has got to go to Maxim for what he's done when he's came in. I think he's probably just because he's one of the newest ones, but I think we've been missing someone like that since like Ben Arthur. Do you know what I mean? When I used to watch Ben Arthur, I used to just he had that ability to just just fly past players, and I think we've been crying out crying out for that for a long time. 
Um, and I think the impact that he's made just by himself coming in and driving the players, getting us further up the pitch, we're creating a lot more chances. So you can see where we're going to get success. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why we're trying to isolate him 1v1 against anyone, really. Um, so I think right now, he's definitely the most exciting that we've got on the ball. And I think he's the most likely to create something as well. Um, but I love watching Almiron as well. Uh, getting on the ball, works so hard for the team. I think a, a lot of people don't realise how much he does defensively as well. Um, but uh, I'd probably say Maxim at the minute, just how exciting he is. And we just need more players like that, you know, to lift the, get the crowd on the edge of their seat, you know, Venus and James's. Yeah, Will says, what's your favourite away ground in America? Uh, that's a tough one. I haven't been, I haven't been, uh, I haven't been, been many. Nice? I haven't been to many, so that's that's a tough one. Um, like I say, we've only we've only played one game before before this pandemic, you know. So we haven't yeah. we have we haven't played away yet. Right. Okay. Uh, but there's some brilliant there's some brilliant stadiums. Uh, I think it's the, the one that Rooney played at at DC. Yeah. Um, a lot of the cars, like the Mercedes, the Audis, they're taking over a lot of stadiums. Um, but the Benz is the the Benz is brilliant. The Mercedes Benz for Atlanta. I've never seen like something like that at Newcastle would just be would just take it to another another level. Um, I think it's the best stadium in the world to be honest. And I think in there it's just you get the full like fan experience. You know what I mean? Everything's there for you. And I think it's a you know it's the right the right shape where everything's condensed into into the pitch. I think if we could do something like that with an extension at St James's, then it would be something to look at. Yeah, a lot of people have been on here over the last few weeks saying that they'd seen that we could rotate the pitch and things could be changed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure whether that's feasible, like, but, um, you know, if things progress as we hope they do with a takeover, then, you know, we might need a bigger ground. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. John Ball says, being a right back, do you rate Yedlin? Uh, I think he does a job. I think he does a job. I think he's good. I think he's, he's all right. He's, I don't think, to be honest, like if we're going to move forward and the owners come in, I think it's definitely the, the fullbacks positions is definitely something we need to look at to, to strengthen. Because I think you know in the modern game, you look at all the top teams; they've all got top fullbacks. You know what I mean? They're all they're all joined in with the attack. But I think he does a job. He's you know he's quick. Um, defensively, I think he could be a little bit better. But for for where we are right now, he does he does a job for it. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I, I definitely think if we want to progress, then you know the fullbacks. We're gonna to have to bring in some some young, like exciting or proven fullbacks who are good at you know good at the Premier League level. Scott Thompson and Gav Lish ask similar questions. Basically, want to know what your thoughts are on the new Beckham Miami team. Do you think it'll lift the MLS and do you think it'll draw in high profile players? I think it will. Yeah, I think it will. Um, obviously, it's in a it's in a great place. It's not far from here. Um, obviously, with Beckham being the head of it, he's, he's bound to draw draw players in. And I think it's moving away from the, it's kind of moving away from the, you know, Gerrards and the Lampards coming to retire here. They're not really, they're not really looking at that anymore. People are coming in here when they're young. Do you know what I mean? To, because the MLS has grown, and I, and I don't think people are coming to finish their careers off here anymore. So I think if there is young, like exciting talent, then, then it would be, you know, obviously to, he'll have a great setup down there. Yeah. People say we should get Pabsy on for a life because he's nah, uh, nah, 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 he nah. took the rotating pitch thing a little bit too far. He thinks I meant like the tuxedo princess, uh, the old boat that used to be on the tiny. He says the players would get dizzy though. Yeah, Classic. you'd have a la you'd have a laugh if you got him on. <laughs> uh, Ian Ray says great chat again. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Ross Palmer says think you need to get Pabsy on. He's cracking me up. Uh, NUFC Reese says which one would you sign, Willems or Rose? Um. I think Danny Rose is hot and cold. To be honest, he's been he's been he's been great in some games, but then some games he just doesn't turn up. Um, I don't know. That'd be a tough one because I think Willems he offers a bit going forward as well. Obviously, the goal at Liverpool, and you know he's got that. But defensively as well, I, I think they, they could both be be better. Um, I think I'd go in for someone else, someone at a different left back. Some, yeah, of the, like, some of the likes of Andy Robertson, someone like with that kind of that kind of game up and down, you know, left sided, probably yeah. probably someone like that. I don't think Rose. You know, I mean, we don't know what the circumstances were on the train journey that day, but when the players came back on on the train, see, yeah. a little bit of banter between them and a few of our fans, it it didn't really come across well. I, I would go for Villains if he comes back 
comes back, you know, okay from uh, from the injury. I mean, it was it was terrible to see him get that yeah, injury. Yeah, yeah, it was. He was just, just starting to really come into his own after such a horrendous start on that opening home game of the season. But uh, John Ball says, Max Aaron's from Norwich. It's not the first time we've been... Uh, you know, we've we've heard that name on on the on the show. You know, would would you look at maybe bringing him in? Ah, uh, yeah, and I think another one that's seen there, uh, Lewis as well. They're, you know, they're both cracking young, young, exciting fullbacks. Where I think they're definitely Max Aaron's. I've seen him play. Um, I think he, someone like him would be would be a good signing. Uh, definitely, in my opinion, better than what I've got at the minute. Yeah, Gaz Houston says, Steve, can you get Keegan on as a final F off to Ashley? If he was on Instagram, he might he might have done it. I don't know. Look, I've asked a few people for you know for, to come on. Some people just can't do it. Shira can't do it. I have asked him. Unfortunately, he's contracted. Um, I think Shea Given will come on, which will be good. I've got Rule Fox on later this week, uh, Thursday. So, you know, there is some more Newcastle players that will come on, guys. Uh, Ian Mark, will Atlanta qualify for the Champions League? Uh, I think that's the one against Mex the Mexican team. I think they will. Yeah. I yeah, I think that I think the Benz is a it could, it's a total different atmosphere and a total different setting. You know, I think we're better at home. Um, I think yeah, I think they'll, they'll stuff them at home. Yeah. Uh, Key Bo says Jermel Lewis from Norwich is a cracking right back. Yeah. Uh, Mister Bragg says this is a roundabout way of <laughs> Roundabout way of asking the same question, but uh, what player would you not like to see Newcastle buy from Atlanta? Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody wants to strike, and that's the problem. Yeah, everybody I don't want to say it. Like I say, I, I don't want to say it too much. Like obviously, still playing at the club, and exactly. Um, yeah. It's a good test, you see, for, for 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 future interviews. This, you know, you're getting you're getting asked by a, a tough crowd. Yeah, uh, it is. Steve Thompson says, nice kid, very honest with his views. Uh, Savannah Mag says, do you think that college soccer is a good way to develop or would an earlier introduction to professional club soccer in those 18 to 21 years of age be better? I think the college is a good way, especially like a lot, there's a lot of money and there's a lot of exposure and opportunity in, in college. Um, and you will obviously like, I don't know how you, you probably don't know how it works, but like, you know, if you do well enough in your league, which they call like a conference, you go to the national tournament where there's, there's, there's scouts from basically every MLS team, you know, and if you're doing well in college, you're going to get the opportunities. And I just, for, for me personally, I've seen that as a better, I've seen that as a better plan than, yeah. than playing a Gateshead or taking six months of Forest and, you know, hopping around that kind of level and not really, like I say, I wanted to secure something from my future. Um, so I think coming over and playing the college route is definitely, Definitely good, you know. I played for four years. I've seen the whole of America, you know, traveling all over. Brilliant experience with like some top lads, you know. And I think at one point we had seven or eight English lads in our team. So it's basically we took the northeast over to over to Atlanta, um, so you can meet some great people. But I think the college route is it is good, and you, you will get opportunities if you're playing well enough. Good stuff. Uh a talks uh, says great chat. Jack is a very articulate lad. He's a future coach or manager. Take care. Uh, cheers, Dave. Uh, Dan Davis says McNeil from Burnley as well would be a good shout. Sorry if he's been mentioned. The Ben grabbed me phone. Um, <laughs> Nigel Adams says evening lads. Hi mate. Uh, CM Sports says uh, it's Colin Middlemas. Hi. He says what young English talent would you look to sign for Newcastle? I was thinking about this one over the last few days, and I think. If we can get someone like Coutinho in, he's not not the obviously not the young one that I'd be looking at, but someone like the the likes of Phil Foden from Man City, if he wanted yeah. to come and play more regular football, um, and you know really come into a project, then I think he would be someone like Phil Foden, your Mason Mounts or something like that. You know, young English players, I think they would be especially Phil Foden. If we bring him in, you know, and he's seen that you know the club are getting quality players then it, that would give him that, that first-team football that he needs in the Premier League. And I think it would benefit him and Newcastle because, obviously, I think he'd be he'd be one of our best players as well. Yeah, Piney says, nice to see you've still got your Geordie accent. Uh, Slide Cockrell says, are, are there any players currently in Europe who may end up in the MLS? He said he could imagine Cristiano Ronaldo in the MLS one day. Uh, and I, I'd, I'd put, I'd put uh, Bale in the mix as well. Like yeah. I say, he, he's banging on about his golf. There's some cracking golf courses in Atlanta if he fancies it. Yeah. Um, they're players like that, I think, 
like I say, not necessarily coming to the end of their con their their career. I think other clubs, like other players that are not really getting their game at clubs, I think it's a real option now. You know, especially I think with Atlanta and Almiron going to Newcastle and doing as well as he as well as he has, I think it shows the quality that they've got here at Atlanta. And, you know, in MLS as well. Yeah, Paul Hope says, I think you need to keep us up, Steve, after takeover. Well, I've got a YouTube channel. I do intend to do a few uh, interviews on there once we get out of lockdown. Pabsy, thank you. Honestly, you're paying so much attention. When Steve now needs a refill, you notice that your glass is empty, now my glass is empty. Maybe he's found his vocation in life filling people's drinks. He's just, he wants to get on, doesn't he? He does, definitely. <laughs> um, FGSR says, I'm 10. How would I get in your position when I leave school? I think, and like I say, I, I coach at a local club as well in Atlanta. Um, and I think some of the lads that I coach, the, the under 10s, and I think all the way up to like 14, 15, you've just got to enjoy it as much as you can. Do you know what I mean? It's just have fun, make friends, and, you know, play as, as much as you can, practice as much as you can. But I don't think this is the age to really consider, you know, like if you really yeah. want. I think when you get to like 40, you know, keep playing until you're 14, 15. And then I think that's at the point where you've got to, Say it yourself, like, do I, am I really going to sacrifice everything? Um, like I say, people like Pabsy and that were going out um, Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. We went to my school, and a lot of the times I stayed in and 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 didn't didn't go out, you know, and, and sacrificed a lot to get where I am. But obviously, you're not going to do that at ten year old. So I think just keep playing until you get a little bit older, and then and then you can decide whether you really want to pursue, you know, a, a career in football. Um, and, and then see what opportunities you've got. I think the big advice as well, I mean, you gave it earlier on, is, is you, know, you know, learn from the rejections. And I think the key factors are really keep off your Xbox or your computer games, practice as much as you can, play football and enjoy football because it's there to be enjoyed. And if your opportunities come along, take them, do you know what I mean? And, and you have to accept as well that football is a very tough industry and it's usually one in a million that makes it to the top level. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean if you don't make it at the top level that you can't still enjoy football. I had 20 years in the Sunday leagues, you know, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Got some great dust collectors and some great memories. And, you know, football football can still be there for you. You might have to work for a living, like, you know, a lot of the population, but at least you can still enjoy football. So it's never, it's never all over, you know, if you don't make it as a professional. I think it's the important thing for a young 10-year-old to listen to as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. Paul says, seems a really level-headed kid, Steve. I hope he breaks through. As Bryce, I would be so pleased for Jack. Uh, he's just had a big crack with Bryser as well, which is nice. John Ball says, do you think Gateshead need to move away from the Gateshead Stadium? Um, honestly, I, I don't know a lot about the current situation at the yeah. moment. Um, obviously, I still look out for the scores and, and, you know, keep trying to have a look at some highlights when I can. But it was always a problem when I was there as well, like, you know, fighting over, like, who, who had the rights to it or who, you know what I mean? So I think, I don't, nice I'm not to have sure. their own ground. I mean, it would the, be, perfect, uh, the perfect ground for them is a the club that I'm still involved with, and that's Dunstan. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think something like that would be would be good because then they have full ownership of what they're trying to do. You know, what I mean, they've got a platform to build from, and and they're not trying to negotiate with, you know, people who, you know, you don't own your own club, and you know what I mean. I think it would be good to be a good good way to do it if they've got the right people to, to do it. They need a pitch in a clubhouse and, a, and, a, and stands that size. Something which can comfortably hold two and a half thousand is, is all they need. But at the moment, it's, it's a nightmare. You know, if you, if you end up with a crowd of six, seven hundred in a stadium that's made for 12,000, it, it's going to kill the atmosphere. Gaz Anderson says, has there been any players which you have played with back home that have gone on to have a, a career in football? Uh, yeah, there's been a few that I've played with. Um... Alex, one of them's Alex Whitmore. He was at Burnley. Um, I think he's playing the National League now. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of lads, to be honest. Adam Armstrong, used to play against him regularly. Um, obviously, he's at Blackburn now. Uh, Jamie Sterry, one of my friends who play, he's, he's obviously at Newcastle. Um, and there's a few, there's a few other lads. One of the, one of the lads that, uh, he didn't make it, but he's, he's probably the best player I've played against. Was to or played with was Tony Woods. Was a, is a lad from Wall's End. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a left winger. He had just a cracking left foot. Um, but it, I think that's a big 
difference in the support level over here yeah. to back home. Um, I think with the right support, he would be he could play as, as high as he wanted to. And I think that's why, like in America, with the, the the club football here, with the parents always come to watch all the sessions and they're going on trips and always support. And I just think that back home, if we can support support as much as we can, then I think a lot more players from around our area will, will, yeah. will make it. Yeah. Lee Ryder's on. He says, good work, lads. So, uh, got to keep in with him. He's a local journalist. If you ever come back, uh, you yeah. keep, in, keep in with him. Uh, Kevin Thompson says, set up a concept. A uh, concept would suit Gateshead. Yeah, I mean, the, look, the Northern League pitches are fantastic. And some of the grounds, Bishop Auckland's ground, you know, is, is fantastic. You go up there, fantastic setup. It's what Gateshead need. But with that, they need, they need, they need money, they need investment. So that's exactly. what Chris Simmons says, evening, gents. Cracking interview. Just finished work, driving home with a big smile on my face, Jack. I'm not sure if that's somebody... Uh, that, that's, yeah, that's my uncle Chris. He, uh, he's an RAF boomer, so he'll be driving back home now. Yeah, good stuff. Well, listen, um, unbelievably, we've come to the end of it. I'm sure you were probably panicking a little bit about how the hell we're going to fill an hour. But, you know, it's... it's uh, got flew, such a good, flew past, isn't it? We've got such a good crowd watching. And because you're such a good, you know, you're a good talker, um, you know your football, you know your stuff... It's absolutely superb to you know to have you on and and at least give you a little bit of publicity and 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 I think the most important thing is although your mates have been having a laugh you know they're probably delighted to see you on here um, and that's uh, what it's all that's what it's all about you know they're back home um, in the freezing cold while you're sunning it out there. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. It's boiling pa- over. Yeah. Pabsy, you've been today. Cla- class, lads. Fair play, says Pabsy. You've been class, mate. Well done, son. Um, you know, honestly, all I can do is wish you all the best in your career and. Um, you know, I'm sure that uh, I'm speaking for everybody who's watching. You know, you're a level-headed kid, and, and I'm sure you'll be, you know, very successful in the future. No, oh, thank you. Appreciate you having us on as well. Obviously, it's been great to to come on and chat and uh, and try and help a few people back home as well. You know, obviously give some advice as well. Um, but I think it gives you an incentive to to maybe watch more of our games now at Atlanta. You know, there's more of a connection and vice versa as well. So, you know, the connection between the club is has been brilliant, but. All right, cheers for having us on. It's been good. No, good. And I know Classy will probably want to keep you in that Atlanta 2 team, but um, I hope you get into the first team sooner rather than later, mate, as I say, so we can all watch you and support you. And uh, hopefully, as you said earlier, that connection between Newcastle United and Atlanta will only grow. So your dream of potentially coming back home one day might come true, mate. But uh, stay safe out there. Um, lovely your family, mate, and speak to you soon. All right, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Take care. See you, Jack. Bye. Bye. Great to have Jack on. Absolutely superb. What a, what a level-headed young lad. And uh, definitely, as Andrew Ray says, he's a credit to the family. Just time to tell you who I've got on. 